Very few people know what you can actually make from a grape. First of all, the grape brandy, secondly, the grape mark brandy, and thirdly, of course, the most famous, the so-called wine brandy. Welcome to a new episode of Inside World Spirit Shots. Today it's all about the grape. I've invited a friend to join me today, Hubertus Wallender from the Mosel Valley in Germany. We will talk about the topic of grapes and the facets of production. Servus Hubertus. Servus Wolfram. Hubertus, you know a grape brandy should also taste of grapes. A Mark brandy should taste of grape Mark and not yeast, and a yeast brandy should not taste of brandy but yeast. And that's basically how different the definitions of the products are. Let's start, for example, with a Mosel Riesling. With a grape brandy, how would you describe that one? A grape brandy is always a very fruity That is, if the acidity is right, of course. I have a lot of easter in it, and these fruity easters are just coming into the nose in a very voluminous and sweetish way. Of course, you work with the grapes from your homeland with the Riesling, since you actually live in the Riesling capital. But normally, one uses very aromatic grapes like Muscat or Tamina because they are simply more aromatic, more intense. But even from a Riesling, as you do, uh, you can make a top brandy. You make two different yeast products. You make wine yeast and you make a sparkling wine yeast. Please explain to me the difference there also from the aromatic point of view. It's like this. Initially, I wanted to make champagne yeast, but you really can't get that. And so we took a sparkling wine instead that was produced in Germany for the sparkling wine yeast. That is always only what is degaussed from the bottle during fermentation. That's the one thing. And the other one is the wine yeast from a cold fermented Riesling, which has been fermented very slowly, partially seven to eight months, and which then settles at the bottom. What we find is that the yeast from the wine is, of course, a bouquet of aromas, in the front a bit pushy like an ice candy, and then in the back very voluminous with floral aromas. With a sparkling wine yeast, it is very stringent, a bit narrow and somehow cold fermented, but also very fruity in aromatics. Hubertus, so that our viewers can get an idea, what exactly is the sparkling wine yeast? The sparkling wine yeast, as I already said before, is the small piece which settles on the bottle during the degaussing or during the turning, uh, which is then uh, collected when, you, when it falls out of the bottle. Uh, and you can imagine how many tens of thousands of bottles it takes to get 1,000 liters of yeast. It's a very laborious thing, but on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's totally worth it. It's something very special. I know it's a very special thing, but a thimble in a sewing box is certainly bigger than what you're using. But now, what is the real difference for you from a white wine yeast to a, compared to red wine yeast from the production onwards, please? So it's like this. With the white wine yeast, I will take three basic varieties. Pinot Blanc, Sauvignon Blanc or Riesling. There we have a much more fruity aroma in the distillate afterwards than with the red one, which is a bit duller, not as loud as these white wine yeasts. The red, however, if it's done well, uh, for example from Pinot Noir, they develop an incredible body. Personally, I prefer the white wine yeast, but there are also some people who are fans of a red wine yeast. The essential oils are much more prevalent with the white wine compared to the red wine. Hubertus, to speak about the mark, the white wine mark is taken from the white wine, the red wine mark is taken from the red wine. The white wine is pressed, or it can be, of course, if it's produced according to biodynamic principles, then it probably also has more wine or liquid in it. And the red wine mark would normally have to have more, under air quotes now, more wine content with it and be more liquid, right? 
Nein, weil no, a wine nicht, share, not really. Ist ja But it's im, fermented im verboren, in also the wine das, das that ferments with the skins und wird dann uh, erst nach der Gärung separiert. and is then separated Weiß, only after ja fermentation. And with the white wine, the process is reversed. Ja. It is pressed und, uh, at the beginning, preferably with the whole grape also pressings, gepresst. and then also cooled. Und dass das dann separat, uh, so cooled wird. and pressed so that it is then compressed separately. It is very important with the white wine mark. In contrast to the red wine, which is not compressed, this means that it undergoes a certain amount of oxidation due to fermentation and decanting. This is not the case with the white wine mark, and so we already have quite different aromatic, basically a spectrum, which are inside with red and with white. Roberto, thank you for sharing your experience with grape products. It's really exciting to hear how different grape products can be when it goes from mark to yeast. I can only recommend to our viewers to make this trip to the Mosel to be able to authentically understand this culinary way in food and drink. Roberto, thanks again for your participation. You're welcome. The inside world spirit with the inside world spirit shots and also to you dear viewers thank you for watching and i would be happy to see you again at the inside world spirit shots